What is your craziest dorm story? Story one. We were drinking in our dorm room or roommates one Friday night, and actually, we were a bunch of pricks. We were at another friend's birthday dinner and bought alcohol off of him to skip his party altogether. The two of us brought along our other friend, a guy who had a massive crush on my roommate. So anyway, we were all drinking and having a good time, but then the guy starts making out with my roommate. Now I'm sitting on my laptop so I had no concern for what was happening inches from me. And even when he pushed her onto my bed, I didn't care. I was too engrossed in random people's comments or something. Next thing I know, I hear her shout, He's sucking my nipple! I start cheering for this guy and telling him to get it. She's on the floor giggling as they're making out, and he starts some over-the-clothing heavy petting. Soon after I decide to call it quits and fall asleep, I wake up the next morning to him sleeping in her bed. She has no underwear on, he's missing his shirt, and the two of them and a large majority of the room is covered in Nutella. I'm in awe. A brand new jar of Nutella got smeared everywhere. Now I'm not even sure what happened that night. My roommate freaked out and kicked this guy out. He started doing this sad George Michael walk to the door, left, and then five minutes later came knocking because he wanted to see if he could get some water and a piece of gum from me. I ended up spending a large majority of the afternoon cleaning up the Nutella and smashed Cocoa Puffs, which somehow got smushed into my sneakers, while my roommate puked and my guy friend texted me links to sappy love songs, trying to explain how that's how he's feeling and I needed to relay this information to the roommate. We don't talk about this day anymore. Story 2. Alright, I have a good one. So I lived on the top floor of a 17-story dorm. It was a co-ed floor that was the computer science floor. I think there are around 50 people living on the floor, half being guys and half being girls. So we have 25 of the nerdiest guys you can find and 25 really hot girls who weren't into CS. They just took too long to pick rooms and this is all that was left. So anyway, it's been a couple weeks of us living together and it's one of the guy's birthdays. Skinny, nerdy, stereotypical computer science major. Now me and a couple of the girls on the floor think that it would be hilarious to get him a stripper. So we start calling up stripper places and apparently none of the girls want to come to a dorm. Finally, we get to a place and the guy on the phone says that he'll ask and comes back and tells us that he found us a girl. He told us that it would be around $250. Now we don't have $250. I barely have $5 to buy a cup at the party that I was going to later that night. And this is when we got the genius idea to just spread the word around all 17 floors of our dorm that we were gonna be ordering a stripper and just charge $5 at the elevator. So finally the time comes and people start showing up. We get a bunch of chairs and put them in our lounge and the stripper is about to show up and we have around 50 people all crammed into our tiny lounge. The birthday boy was on a chair in the middle of the room and everyone else was sitting in a circle around him. Finally, the stripper showed up and is just as bad as we'd expected. She looked like she came straight from the trailer park to our dorm. She had a schoolgirl outfit that might have actually been hers when she was like 12 years old or something, but at 30 with a few extra pounds on her was not at all flattering. She gets there and is shocked that we had 50 people in the room waiting for her to dance. She was thinking it was just going to be a small get-together. Anyway, we have never ordered a stripper before being nerds, so we didn't have any music set up. She ended up starting out just by going around the room, giving everyone a dance, which wasn't even that weird. Then it got weird, like very. She finally turns her attention to the birthday boy. Now he's been waiting in the chair in the middle of the room, and she stands him up, takes his belt off. He looks nervous, and he should be because she then stripped him completely nude in front of all 50 people. I'm pretty sure he almost died right there. Then she proceeded to spank him with his belt and not to mention all the weird other stripper things. She wrapped his pecker in money, took it off with her mouth, and meanwhile this kid is bright red. His willy is basically crawling inside of himself to get away from her, and there is just 50 people sitting watching in awkward silence, just watching this train wreck. No one could look away. Finally, she finished up and everyone just beelined out of there. That kid holed up in his room for a bit, but eventually came out of his shell again. Well, it sounds like that poor birthday boy learned that sometimes getting what you wish for isn't all that it's cracked up to be, especially when it comes to strippers. Who knew a lack of funds and a little bit of creativity could result in such an unforgettable, albeit awkward experience. The first red flag here should have been that when you call all these places and they're not going to send a stripper to your dorm, this means at the time that you do get to somebody that agrees to show up, yeah, they're not going to be grade A material. Second red flag, 
obviously the price. Now I could be wrong here, but I feel like $250 is a very, very cheap price for a dancer like that. This should have been a preview of what was about to happen. Is it embarrassing and cringy? Sure, but guaranteed all of them will cherish this forever. Story three. In the late 70s and early 80s, Illinois State built a brand new dorm building where the rooms all had two closets, one on each sidewall. But because they built the dorm on the cheap, the backs of the closets didn't have real walls, only thin pieces of press board. That was all that separated one dorm room from the next. Once students figured this out, they cut big holes in the press board so that you could get back to the adjoining dorm room by opening the closet door and scooting through the hole in the back wall. They did this in room after room until they had effectively built a huge secret passageway connecting every single dorm room on the floor. The creation of this secret passageway led almost immediately to a culture of endless, numerous, and authority-proof dorm parties. As soon as anybody knocked on the door or the party room, everybody could bail out through the closets and be seven doors down the hall by the time that the RA or campus security were let in. Or they would keep all the alcohol and whatnot in one room and have all the people in the next. So, even when the RAs knew that there was a ginormous party happening, they couldn't do jack crap about it. It was a total nonstop chaos. Some of the bigger hooligans would commit all manners of mischief on campus and then hightail it to this dorm building, knowing that once they were safely inside any room, there was no way that the cops could ever find them. Every summer, the school would replace the ripped out press board with sturdier and sturdier material, but students got stronger saws and kept rebuilding the secret passageways year after year. Eventually, only a few years after they built it, the school just gave up and tore the building down. Story four, our dorm was all singles and the doors directly opposed each other in the hallway and opened into rooms. We lived on the fifth floor of our building. I was playing Super Smash in my friend's room with the door open when we heard some floor mates laughing in the hallway. They'd taken an entire roll of duct tape and constructed a duct tape rope between one of their doors and their friends, who at the time was studying in his room, unaware of his impending predicament. The guys pounded on his door and let Dan know that he was trapped in his room and they weren't gonna let him out. Dan ran to the door and pulled as hard as he could, but the duct tape held strong. He tried and tried before giving up and declaring that he'd find a way out. 20 minutes later, Dan knocked on his door and told his friends to go to the bathroom down the hall and look out the window. We followed along with his friends and we all peered out the window towards where Dan's window was, curious to see what he thought he was gonna do. Well, we saw his window open and a thin rope thrown out and lowered towards the courtyard about 40 feet below. By the time we realized that it was a 30 foot long ethernet cord, not a rope, Dan was already out of the window, dangling 40 feet above the courtyard. Now bear in mind, this was in the middle of winter. It was probably like 30 degrees outside. As he tried to rappel down the wall, our RA happened to walk in the bathroom to see what all the commotion was. Needless to say, he almost had a heart attack when he saw Dan dangling from an ethernet cord. Somehow, some way, Dan managed to make it all the way to the bottom of the cord, but was still 15 feet above the concrete. So he dropped and rolled and we all cheered as he ran to the door to come back inside. When he got back up and back into his dorm, he showed us how he'd done it. The crazy son of a gun had tied his ethernet cord to his radiator that was next to his window and thought it would be a great idea to use it as an anchor to repel 40 feet down the building. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen in my life, let alone just a dorm. Well, that's one way to escape a duct tape trap. It sounds like Dan was determined to not let his friends get the best of him. I guess we can add ethernet cord repelling to the list of survival skills that you can pick up in college. Now, hopefully he doesn't need to use this again anytime soon. But this is the kind of person who's going to have no problem surviving a zombie apocalypse. Story 5. I was visiting a friend at another school for the first time. He and I were planning on smoking until we walked into his dorm room and saw a girl on his bed in labor. We were both speechless until his roommate came running back from the bathroom with a wet towel and said, Don't freak out! Don't freak out! The girl turned out to be one of the roommate's sisters who lived nearby and was visiting. She went into labor a few weeks early, so everyone was thrown off guard. They eventually took an ambulance to the hospital, and once they were gone, we saw that she was sitting on my friend's bed when her water broke. We ended up cleaning up the mess for a while, and then smoked like never before in order to get the image of a total stranger screaming her lungs out of our heads. Story 6. I was a freshman and not particularly used to what drunks were like, 
so I left my dorm room's door open while I was in, in case any neighbors wanted to pop by. One Friday night, some big guy, who I didn't know, strolled into my room, smelling like he was drenched in boots. He walks in the center of the room in a circle, bobbing his head and making inch, 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 inch noises as he goes, and then leaves without ever acknowledging me. I stopped leaving my door open after that. Now, after the fact, it was pretty funny, but at the time it happened, though, I'm pretty sure that I was going to get abducted. Story 7. A friend of mine tells a story about his freshman year in a dorm with a roommate. The roommate was heading off to class, and my friend was ready to enjoy some quality alone time with some specialist gentleman's literature, if you know what I mean. For some reason, he decided this session was going to occur completely nude. Having disrobed, sat at his desk, firing up the internet, there was the rustling of keys in the door. Now, for some reason, the roommate was coming back into the room. Thinking unfathomably quickly, he grabbed the open can of Dr. Pepper on the desk and poured it all over his body. As the door opened, he said, God damn it, I spilled this Dr. Pepper all over myself. Mental reflexes of a cat. Story 8. My freshman year, I worked in addition to being in school. It was a Saturday night, and I was scheduled to work very early the next morning. So I figured I'd shower that night so I could sleep a little bit later. I go into the showers on my floor, turn on the light, pull back the curtain, and I see every single guy on my floor standing together in the same shower stall. All of them were just completely clothed and standing in complete silence. Each of them had a red plastic cup filled with ping pong balls. Now, as soon as they saw me, each of them screamed and ran like bloody hell out of there. I never knew what the heck that was about. So that's definitely an unexpected sight. It's like something straight out of a movie. Maybe they were having a bizarre impromptu game of beer pong in the shower and didn't want to get caught. Or maybe it was some kind of strange initiation ritual that they were trying to keep a secret. Either way, that's definitely a memory that's going to stick with you for a long time. Story 9. This was freshman year, and one night someone left a pile of crap right in the middle of our communal unisex bathroom. The people living on our floor, myself included, thought it was hilarious. Our RA didn't find it nearly as funny. He encouraged anyone with information on the phantom pooper to come forward. He put out a poster in the hallway for us to write on with, Our bathroom being violated makes me feel at the top. We filled it up with heartfelt sentiment such as, It makes me feel crappy. How could anyone be such an a-hole? and I've been pinching off my tears ever since. We never did discover the identity of the phantom pooper. Story 10. Not me, but my friends from an ROTC camp that had some pretty good ones. My friends, total of four, went to an ROTC camp for a month. That's a junior military program. They all had to stay in dorms for the duration as well. Now, friend D informs the group that he left his medication at home and then assured everyone that he didn't need it anyway. Now, fast forward to the night that we arrived, friends A, B, and C, wake up to the sound of squeaking, like the sound of something rubbing up against a screen. They all start turning around in their beds until they see the unholy image of the moonlight shining through the window and illuminating friend D, bare naked, rubbing his balls across the TV while squealing like a pig. A few days later, friend D takes a crap in the shower when he thinks everyone is gone, also squealing like a pig. That same evening, friend B takes a break from cleaning the mess hall to go to the bathroom. Friend B takes a stall and starts to do his business when he hears the door open. Friend B looks at the bottom of the stall and recognizes the shoes that belong to Friend D. Friend D then starts to pound on the stall. Friend B then gets into a shouting match with things along the lines of, What part of occupied and farting don't you understand? Friend D runs out of the restroom, grabs a butter knife from the mess hall, runs back to the restroom, and then proceeds to use it to break the lock open on the stall that friend B was in. Friend D then kicks the stall door so hard that he breaks the door off its hinges. He looks at friend B and says, oh, I didn't know you were in here, and then proceeds to take a dump in the sink. So it sounds like friend D was quite the character at that ROTC camp, rubbing his balls on the TV and taking a dump in the shower and sink. It's a wonder he wasn't kicked out of the program. And the fact that he used a butter knife to break open a locked stall while being occupied by friend B, that's just ridiculous. It's a good thing that nobody got hurt. It's hard to believe that this all happened in just a few days, but I can only imagine what other crazy things friend D got up to during the rest of their time at camp. 